Session 510, Chapter 3, Verse 181, A Continuation. لَقَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَاءٌ سَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَالُوا وَقَتْلَهُمُ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍّ وَنَقُولُ ذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقُ God has indeed heard the words of those who said, God is poor while we are rich. We shall record everything they say, as well as their killing of prophets in defiance of all that is right. And we shall say to them, Taste the torment of the scorching fire. Chapter 3, verse 181. In the previous session, we discussed how the Jews of Medina mocked God after they heard the following verse, Who will lend God a good loan so he may multiply it for him, and for him is a generous reimbursement? Chapter 57, verse 11. They did not value God's respect for our work and property. Thus they responded, God is poor while we are rich. Allah answers, We shall record everything they say. Why would God record such events if he knows everything? We answer that a record is meant to serve as evidence. When a man, such as Rabbi Finhas, faces his deeds on the Day of Judgment, he will see his actions firsthand. Recording events is an insurance policy against what might be denied in the future. It is similar to how we document financial transactions and property transfers. Had the knowledge only come from God's Word, a person may object with, It is you, O Lord, who made this up. But such claims can't be denied if there is a clear record. The Jews didn't understand that when God asked us for a loan, it was not an act of need, God forbid, but one of love and mercy from the Almighty to foster human kindness towards one another. Everything you have is a bounty from God, yet He respects your time, sweat, and the wealth you accumulated. God did not say, Give my provisions to your brother. Instead, he says, Lend to me from your earnings by helping your brother, and I will reward you handsomely. Sadly, the children of Israel dealt with God in poor manners. In fact, this was not the first time they disrespected the Lord. Listen to verse 64 of chapter 5. The Jews have said, God is tight-fisted, but it is they who are tight-fisted, and they are rejected for what they have said. God's hands are open wide. He gives as he pleases. What has been sent down to you from your Lord is sure to increase insolence and defiance in many of them. We have sown enmity and hatred among them till the day of resurrection. Whenever they kindle the fire of war, God will put it out. They try to spread corruption in the land, but God does not love those who are corrupt. Ibn Abbas narrated, Indeed, God gave the Jews abundantly in this world until they became the wealthiest of people. But when they went against his command and disbelieved in Muhammad, peace be upon him, Allah put them through tough times and restricted their provisions. Finhas and his Jewish followers said, The sky has closed and the hands of Allah are tied, so we no longer receive sustenance. They dared to overstep the limits and disrespect the Creator. God responded with the ayah, The Jews have said God is tight-fisted, but it is they who are tight-fisted and they are rejected for what they have said. Truly, God's hands are open wide. He gives as He pleases. This behavior proved to be a pattern that would repeat. Later, they dared against the Lord again and said, God is poor while we are rich. Allah informed our beloved Muhammad of these incidents to give him solace, as if the Lord is saying, This is their attitude toward me, the Almighty, and if their bad manners led them to dare to speak against the exalted, most holy, and say, Indeed, he is poor and we are rich, and the hand of Allah is tied, then do not grieve, Muhammad, when they attack you and your followers. Rest assured, they will not get away with any of this. 
God says, We shall record everything they say. And in another chapter, Moses said, My Lord alone has knowledge of them, all in a record. My Lord does not err or forget. Chapter 20, verse 52. The verb record is translated from the Arabic naktob, which means to write. But writing is not limited to our understanding of pen and paper. It includes documenting every action, thought, sound, and breath. On the day of resurrection, you will see your life spread before your eyes. Everything you did, said, and thought is fully and accurately recorded for your review. God says, Read your book. Today your own self is sufficient to take your own account. Chapter 17, verse 14. Nowadays, many governments and companies constantly record people's actions and communications. Is it really far-fetched that Allah, your Creator, is documenting your every breath and thought? Isn't that the ultimate evidence, both for your good and evil actions, that cannot be denied or refuted? This is the warning Allah issued against the Jews of Medina, who had the audacity of mocking him. He says, God has indeed heard the words of those who said, God is poor while we are rich. We shall record everything they say. It is no wonder that such people have a history of killing the prophets God sent to guide them. The verse continues, We shall record everything they say, as well as their killing of prophets in defiance of all that is right. Allah comforted Muhammad by saying that he was not alone. Many of his predecessors faced similar hostility and much more. Whatever he suffers from his enemies pales in comparison to their daring against God and the killing of prophets. Thus he, peace be upon him, should not be saddened by their hostility. They will not get away with their actions and they will bear witness against themselves before being punished. God says, We shall say to them, Taste the torment of the scorching fire. The choice of the verb taste is interesting because it is a unique sensation. When you touch something, you feel its softness or roughness at the tip of your finger. When you see something, you direct your eye to focus on it. But think about the last time you tasted cake or a lemon. The feeling is not limited to your tongue, but almost engulfs your entire being. Moreover, we all know of blind people, deaf people, and people who lost their skin to burns, but rarely, if ever, do you hear of a person with a complete taste loss. Perhaps that is why taste was used to describe the punishment profoundly. Listen to the following verse. God presents the example of a town that was secure and at ease, with provisions coming to it abundantly from all places. Then it became ungrateful for God's blessings, so God made it taste the garment of famine and fear for what his people had done. Chapter 16, verse 112. Let's take a moment to consider the phrase, so God made it taste the garment of famine and fear. We note that the verb taste was used, but again for something unusual, a garment of famine and fear. Does clothing have a taste? Can you taste fear? No, but these words all express something all-encompassing. You enjoy the taste of food with your entire being. Clothing warps your whole body, while fear and hunger are all-consuming. Thus, the eloquent description in the Quran, we shall say to them, taste the torment of the scorching fire, conveys that the punishment of hellfire will be all-consuming and unbearable. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.